This praying mantis is sporting some unusual eyewear. 3D glasses. Would you like to hold on your hand? Oh my god, she moves in a kind of strikey sort of way. These simple bits of coloured plastic are helping untangle the inner workings of the mantis brain. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm Ali Jennings and I've come to Newcastle in the UK where researchers are testing mantis's sophisticated visual abilities and mapping the brain cells responsible for their 3D vision. So the cool thing about praying mantids are, as far as we know at the moment, they're the only insects that actually have stereoscopic depth perception. Stereoscopic vision in humans involves some pretty complex neural circuitry. Understanding how such a small insect brain manages the task could help engineers design machines that could see in 3D. She is beautiful. Praying mantises are formidable hunters. Like humans, their depth perception depends on having two eyes set slightly apart, so that each eye sees the world from a slightly different angle. Comparing the two images allows the brain to estimate how far away an object is. For decades, people have used 3D glasses to create the illusion of depth. Two images can be laid on top of each other, each a different colour, and in a slightly different position. Coloured lenses filter out one of the colours so that each eye only sees one of the images, tricking the brain into thinking it's seeing a 3D object. So what's going on here is we're displaying this disc twice, once for your left eye and once for your right eye, in two slightly different positions. Jenny Reed is using 3D glasses to test stereoscopic or 3D vision in mantises, but the images work just as well on humans. Yeah, it's like a single black spot that's just jumped out of the screen. It's about there. I feel like a mantis. Just like me, when a mantis thinks it sees something within striking distance, it tries to grab it. And Jenny uses this behaviour to test their 3D vision. So we can use our 3D to manipulate the apparent distance of objects and when an animal reaches out and tries to grab it, then we know it's seeing it in 3D. There you go. That's amazing. But mantis vision doesn't work exactly like ours. They can see some things that we can't. Jenny showed me another kind of stimulus where the solid circles were replaced by this moving pattern. The mantis grabs out as before, apparently seeing a 3D shape, but when I looked, I couldn't make sense of it. Ah, I can see a circle, but it's not 3D. Ugh, it's weird. So in this image, your left eye is looking at a pattern of random dots, and your right eye is looking at a completely different, unrelated random pattern of dots. The mismatched inputs in each eye meant my brain couldn't interpret what I was seeing as a single object. But mantis vision is different. It seems to be based more on change. In other words, which bits of the image are moving. But how does it work? To find out, Ronnie Rosner has begun to map the nerve cells involved. What's that noise? These are the electrical pulses neurons use to communicate with, with each other. Ronnie places electrodes inside individual neurons in a mantis's brain and records electrical signals while showing the mantis the 3D moving circle. And it looks like this neuron might actually be a visual neuron. I think it responded to our swirling disk stimulus. Ronnie uses this setup to figure out what it is particular neurons are responding to. Once he's found an interesting neuron, it's off to the microscope to have a closer look. So what you're seeing here is an actual nerve cell in the praying mantis brain that has been stained. And now, finally, we know how the neuron actually looks like, which we recorded earlier on. Ronnie is then able to construct 3D images of each nerve cell he studies. This particular cell is one of the most exciting neurons we recorded from because it responds to prey-like objects in uh, the striking range of the praying mantis. So when we saw the mantis striking, a neuron like that would have been firing. Exactly. And you can get a better understanding in this way of where the neuron might receive input, right here, 
for example, or here, and where it might send its output, here or here. Ronnie hopes to build a map of all the neurons involved in 3D vision in the mantis. Since they're relatively small and simple creatures, you might expect that the wiring behind their stereoscopic vision would also be very simple. But Ronnie and Jenny are discovering some surprisingly sophisticated circuitry. What Ron is finding is that there's actually a multitude of neurons, different classes of neurons that are tuned to different distances and different directions. So it seems like the circuitry underlying mantis stereopsis is surprisingly complex and actually quite similar to what we find in mammals. But mantises do see differently to us. They base their depth perception on changes and movement in the images they're seeing. And it seems that using change in this way may be the key to making stereopsis simple enough to be implemented in an insect brain. So if you can work out the circuitry behind mantis 3D vision, can you use that in some way? Yeah, I think so. People have already tried to give machines 3D stereoscopic vision, but many of those algorithms have been based very much on human-style stereopsis, which of course might be entirely appropriate for some applications. But there are other situations where, for example, if you had a very low power robot, maybe an autonomous drone where it has to be lightweight, can't have a lot of battery life, then maybe mantis stereopsis, which is based on change over time, might be a good avenue to explore. A robot with mantis-like vision could be simple yet effective. And having another model of stereopsis to work from could help engineers come up with a whole new design for robot vision. But actually figuring out every element of these complex circuits will take more time, more experiments, and of course more mantises wearing tiny 3D glasses. I'm just wondering, like, so basically can it, can it stab through my skin? No, no, question. don't worry, it, it can't do that. I mean, that, that, that's... Well, I mean, not, signif not a lot through your skin. It's not, there's not going to be, like, major blood. Wow, that is so unreassuring. <laughs>